Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting of June 23, 2020. Um, we're starting a little bit late tonight, but in, we're meeting in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield at the Town Hall. Meetings that are normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where, where required, public participation is provided in accordance with the Governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain position, provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Remote meeting connection, it's, uh, we normally are um, actually televised by FCAT, but the Community Access Television um, Group, but they are down at Waitley tonight for the Waitley Town Meeting, so we have no um, TV uh, recording. The dial-in number is 206-331-4836, and then you enter the attendee PIN, 616-833-891-POUND. Call-in participants should dial in, then enter the PIN when prompted. The public is encouraged to log in using their computers or smartphone for better functioning participation. Um, the meeting attendees uh, should mute their phones, star six for landlines, unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. If an attendee is, did not receive an email invitation to this meeting, that person will need to be promoted. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. If attendee is experiencing difficulty speaking during the meeting, we recommend using a computer to participate. Any meeting works best using the Chrome browser. And again, it's not being um, filmed tonight. Um, first uh, item on the agenda is scheduled hearing and appearances. We have none. Uh, select board reports or announcements. Is there anything that either one of you want to discuss? No? Um, let's see. I don't know. I mean, uh, have anything okay. to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Board of Health reports or announcements, uh, COVID-19 update. I just want to say that um, uh, we, the state now is testing almost 15,000 people a day, up from 10. And um, the level of infection is still the same, very low. We are actually number two in the country after Connecticut as being the best um, state uh, to contain the virus. So we are doing wonderful. Um, so please continue to wear your mask, uh, limit your close contacts, and it really it comes down to managing your exposure like you would your, like, like your household budget. Think about grocery shopping versus retail shopping or um, a haircut. You know, what's the need, what, what is necessary, and what's the want. Although, I'm telling you, my hair is getting so long, that could be right up there. But what, what, do, do what you have to do, but try, try to limit it. Keep your acti riskier activities short, and, and it really is the viral load that um, you're exposed to. So the number of people, try to keep that number as low as possible. Try to be outside. Um, for any length of time, keep it outside, and don't let your guard down. Keep wearing your mask, washing your hands. Just keep the mask on. That's probably the most majority of it. I did. I did uh, think of one thing I wanted to mention as far as select board announcements was that people today will start seeing in their mailbox the um, yeah. the, the uh, aggregation, electrical aggregation information. So that will it will. Uh, spur questions, and uh, we're working on a contact for, for people. You know, you could always reach out to me if you have a question. Um, but we're, um, you know, again, Deerfield is, is if, if you hadn't heard from last meeting, Deerfield has grouped in with a lot of other towns to uh, purchase bulk in, um, electricity supply, and that supply will be um, noted on your bill. You're automatically enrolled into that. Um, you can opt out at any time. Um, it should be a more, it can't always be, um, we don't always know that it's going to be less expensive, but based on the 
information we looked at. Uh, the whole idea is to kind of generate more green energy and more green energy jobs in our, you know, immediate location, Massachusetts, you know, New England area. So um, there'll be two options. One will be the automatic enrolling that you're going to be put into. Um, and then you also have a choice if you want to opt into a more um, more mix of uh, green energy as far as, you know, wind, solar, locally uh, produced uh, to produce local jobs. If you want to do that, um, you can get 50% of that energy uh, produced local, locally with green energy. So that's a choice that you could purchase. Again, we'll get stuff up on the website. You'll Trevor? See stuff in your mailbox. Yeah, Jen. Hi, sorry, this is Jen. Um, so I already put a tab on the left side of our website it says Community Choice Power Supply Program. If you click on that, it has uh, a news release. It has a price comparison and also just frequently asked questions. And there is also a phone number with an extension with questions. And the Energy Committee will be answering those questions. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I know I saw an email recently but uh, today, but I didn't know how that finished off. Yep, so it's up, it's already up on the site. Are you there? So the phones oh. automatically go on mute for some reason. Themselves, Jennifer. They just mute for some reason. Can you hear me now? I can now. That's so weird. Okay. Look, it just happens. did it all by itself, yeah. Jennifer. Last week it did that too, but for some reason they just automatically go mute. Um, we'll but we'll keep, an eye. Uh, we'll keep an eye for a red light and we'll, we'll dive for the mute button again. So, okay, um, thanks. Your email um, with MA, and, and I know that you guys are kind of working on getting that messaging out. And um, so thank you for everybody working on that and get, getting the info out to people. I know that people will have Good questions. Good job, Jennifer. So, Thank you. Uh, We're also putting it uh, on the um, the portable sign. The you know, so I'm working with Kevin about getting some information that will direct people to the website and to the phone number. Um, right. Just so you know, and yeah. the people that are you know knowledgeable in it will be the ones to answer these questions since they right. they have all the information. So, Great. Jennifer, can I clarify something? Absolutely. Related to the so. One of the things that Jennifer did yesterday was we worked with our telephone IT people. And we set up a specific mailbox so that people can call in these messages and questions, and they will be responded to by, as Jennifer said, the experts in this, which are the energy resources. Okay, people. great. Well, that's really good. I just want to clarify this. Yeah. May on that, and with uh, Normando, up okay. our tech people on yep. that, and I want to. Thank her for that. Yeah, work. thank you. That's, that's, that's brilliant. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go away. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Um, I also just want to mention from Board of Health that um, trapping and tested, the testing has been started on mosquitoes. Um, it, traditionally, the first week of July is when we first see West Nile disease circulating, but it's been so dry this year. And it was a cold start, so maybe we have an extra week or two. So um, if we have thunderstorms this week, please patrol your yard and make sure there's no standing water um, anywhere for them to breed. They're just waiting to take off. Um, and also just to do tick checks. And we have the subsidized tick test testing still, so um, be careful. So uh, moving down, we have a consent agenda um, and discussion items here. A select board policies. Um, you want to make a motion on that, or do you want to speak well, about it first? Well, I think we should speak about it. Okay. Um, uh, we we are resolute. Um, you know, given all the situation in the country in the last three years and the four years, and and what's happening now, we're we're really resolute that everyone should be treated with fair, equal, and be and civil, be civil to each other in mm -hmm. all engagement. And it doesn't matter who you are. And so we're, we're, we came up with this policy. Um, Casey did some research and came up with a policy. And we're moving forward with it. And we feel it's very, very important that every employee, every appointee 
um, sign off on this policy if they're going to participate in um, our government because we, uh, like I said, are really um, concerned mm -hmm. and we feel that it's one of the things that we could do is make sure that everyone is treated fairly and well. Mm -hmm. um, and we both all think that's important. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, be um, civil with people. Yeah. Yeah. So do, um, do we, we probably should read oh, this. Well, I'll read the, the memorandum that we got from our town administrator. Okay. Attached, you will find a draft conduct, um, a draft code of conduct uh, for approval. After review of the personnel bylaw and investigation of available documentation, um, I did not find a policy. A policy of this type notifies employees of the town's expectations of their conduct and visitors interacting with employees that the town does not tolerate harassing conduct that interferes with performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Uh, since we do not have a policy, I suggest the select board impl implement this for purposes of establishing these guidelines for employees and notification to visitors of their conduct interacting with employees. I recommend that the select board take the following vote to implement the policy immediately and require all employees and appointees to return a receipt acknowledging they received notification. So I move to approve this code of conduct policy effective immediately with the requirement that all employees slash appointees return a receipt of acknowledgement to the town administrator prior to being sworn into office. And I'll second that. Okay. And then I, do you want me to read the code? I think it's important. Yes, I, I think so. We're, we're basically having a meeting tonight for this. Yeah, so um, this is the Town of Deerfield Office of Select Board and Board of Health Code of Conduct, the purpose. The, the Town of Deerfield seeks to provide efficient and effective services to residents, taxpayers, and visitors, expecting employees to conduct themselves professionally with consideration, um, with consideration and diplomacy towards all. The town recognizes that employees expect to be treated with respect and civil, uh, civility by people doing business with the town, as well as other employees and appointees, ensuring the personal safety and security in an environment free from intimidation, threats, or violent acts. The policies, employee appointee. A town employee or appointee is expected to fulfill the responsibilities of his or her position in a manner that is consistent with the expectations of the employer supervisor and the needs of the town. The employee appointee is expected to conduct himself, herself in a professional manner in all aspects of work, formal and informal. All employees, appointees of the town are expected to act in accordance with the standards, standards, policies and rules of the town and to safeguard the town's reputation and resources. These expectations and standards of behavior extend to the use of the town's facilities, equipment, supplies, and technical resources. The following are examples of conduct that may result in a disciplinary action on the part of the town up to and including termination or removal as may be uh, applicable. One, co conduct that adversely affects employee employment conditions that interferes unreasonably with the individual's performance or that creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Two, behavior including but not limited to harassment and sexual harassment, bullying and cyberbullying, unethical, immoral, deceitful, or illegal conduct that is inconsistent with the standards and expectations of the town. Three, behavior that infringes on the well-being of others. Four, interaction with other members of boards, commissions, committees, or employees with uh, which lacks respect. Professional respect does not preclude honest differences of opinion, but requires respect within those differences. Five, disclosure of confidential information, seeking favor, personal aggrandizement, or profit security uh, secured by holding these positions. Six, conduct of official business, which gives the clear impression that the employee appointee may be improperly influenced by the performance uh, in the, uh, let's see, may be improperly influenced in the performance official duties. Um, seven, conduct conduct which 
does not conform to the visitor's code of conduct below, and eight, any other conduct or performance that does not meet the expectations for employees of the town. Um, be aware that the town reserves the right to discipline, suspend, terminate, or remove an employee slash appointee for criminal, felonious, or other serious acts that occur off town premises or outside of working hours in addition to those acts occurring while working. The section is for visitors. Town employees strive to provide a positive experience for those visiting town facilities. The town will not tolerate harassing conduct that affects employment uh, conditions, that interferes unreasonably with the individual's performance, or that creates intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Unassigned letters uh, and anonymous communications will not be considered or reviewed. The town uh, does not tolerate workplace violence, including the threat of violence by anyone who conducts, them, conducts business with the town. Expected conduct. Uh, avoid causing disturbances or disruptions. Show respect for others. Building facilities and personal property of others. Use common courtesy when interacting with others. Do not engage in any lewd or offensive behavior. Any form of uh, violence is prohibited. Smoking, drinking alcohol, or appearing to be under the influence of alcohol or any illegal substance is prohibited. Refrain from using raised voice, yelling, using demeaning or a dis uh, disrespectful language, using profanity or otherwise intimidating language. Comply with this code of conduct is uh, complying with this code of conduct is required by all people doing business with the town employees. Violators who do not comply with this policy may be asked to leave the premises. Repeated violations may result in permanent suspension of facility privileges. The select board reserves the right to modify this policy in whole or in part at any time. This was uh, completed June 26, 2020. Thank you. I think this is a great policy. It really sets out really common sense, but um, today we just need to kind of reiterate that we do expect um, people to behave themselves and treat people with respect just as you'd want to be treated. Um, tensions can get high around a lot of issues that we deal with. Um, we deal with all aspects of life here, and um, we just have to recognize that people um, are trying to do their best job here for people and give the, rest, you know, the best service we can to people. And certainly you can have a disagreement with how you've been treated, but as long as you, you, you relay that disagreement or if you're feeling um, that you haven't been heard, there's ways to kind of relay that information politely and it has a much better impact and a better outcome if it's done respectfully. So thank and, you so much. Right, and every um, appointee and, and employee will have, will have the same code of conduct. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, so okay. I've made that motion. Second it. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Dave Wolfram. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Casey, for your work on this. I really uh, appreciate you, thank you doing you that. Thank you, Council, for help. That is truly and thank you, Council, <laughs> and Jen, and everybody else who's worked right. on that. So. Um, next item on the agenda is FY 2021 appointments. Um, we're going to make appointments. Um, on, some of the appointments are still under review, um, so we're going to consider approval of the revised list provided by the town administrator earlier this um, afternoon. Um, do I have a motion to, to do that? Motion to approve the list uh, revised list provided. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Dave? Hi, Dave Wilson. I, I, Trevor McDaniel. All right, it's unanimous. Thank you. Like I said, some are still under consideration. So um, moving on, contracts, Casey. Okay. Um, so the one that you'll find that I had sent out yesterday was the hazardous mitigation plan update contract with the Franklin Regional Council of Government. We still have comments to incorporate from MEMA into the plan before we present it to FEMA. So we've gotten an extension on the grant. I sent you an email about this, that this afternoon. The grant that paid for the, ven the COG to do this. And so now we need to extend the contract with the COG. 
So I'm presenting it to you because you guys had signed it last. Did they agree to the dollar amount? Yes. Okay. The dollar amount's the same. That hasn't changed. Okay. Um, we also have, I just got it. I warned you I might get it because I wasn't sure. We got the rainwater harvesting contract from time, signed from Time Bond for you guys to approve and authorize the chair to sign. And I also got word from Chris Curtis and Michael Clark at EBI who were working on the contract or the award for the tree boxes and rain gardens that you guys voted last week. Um, they're going to send the Nunes company's contract, and I'm asking if the board will consider uh, approving that and authorizing the select board chair to sign it once we receive the signed copy from Nunes. Because I don't know when we'll get it, mm -hmm. but I know we need to do it soon. Right. So what I did, like rainwater, I added the rainwater one to the rainwater harvesting one to an updated select board packet that we threw up online this afternoon. So as I get them, I usually add them or send you a notification. All right. Did that uh, rainwater come in on The rainwater was budget? the one that you... Um, the rainwater was $13,000, and it's for the engineering services to develop it. And we knew that already, right? Yeah. That hasn't changed. It's an MVP right? grant contract. Yep. Yep. It's just the first time we did that procurement. We didn't, wait. Maybe we had no... No, we only got one response. Right. Um, oh, I see. Time Bond, a different yeah. office at oh, Time Bond. okay. I was going to say, I didn't think we got any response. The first time we did it with the tree boxes and rain gardens, which is a separate contract, the Nunes right. Company's one. Yeah. The first time we didn't, we didn't get any responses, so we had to put it out for another procurement. Then we got like six or something. Or we got six or whatever. Three. Three last week. Yeah. And so last week, you guys had voted to award the contract to the Nunez company as the lowest um, mm -hmm. right. bidder evaluated with the recommendation from EBI, which is Mike Clark and Chris Curtis. And... Um, address the notice to proceed. So I asked them about Mike and Chris today. I asked them about the contract. And so they're going to forward that. The contract it was within the request for proposal. They're going to forward the contract to the Nunes companies. And as I might have mentioned to you guys, I want all these contractors to sign these contracts before the select board does, which is common practice. Yeah. Yeah. And this way we avoid contract negotiation issues later on. Which we ran into with one of the contracts with Tyenbach, which is now settled. I sent you that. Great. I was very excited. All right. So um, the first first one was the FERC Hog for extension from so December of um, to December of 31st of 2020. Yeah. Um, it it actually does not impact us financially at all because the money has already been appropriated through grants. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the uh, amendment to the agreement for services for Franklin County Council, Franklin Regional Council of Governments and the Town of Deerfield for the hazardous, hazard mitigation plan update assistance. I'll second that. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Okay. Do you... Um, do we need to change this because I'm listed as the chair? I mean, I don't know if that matters. Scribble it out. What's that? Scribble it out. She yeah. didn't know that we changed I didn't change it right. in the document because I didn't notice it. it. Sorry. We changed. No, that's fine. I I'll yeah. scrap that and you put chair next to you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you have that signature yeah. there. Oh, okay. is this the one that we signed? Yeah, we all okay. three signed. All right. Let me... Um... I think so. Anyway, so I'm not sure. Oh, maybe it's this You know what? I could reprint it. There. Oh, oh, that's different? No, that's, that's the... Oh, um, okay. That's all right. We'll sign this one. Right. You know what? I could reprint it and change the chair thing. Oh. I don't think they sent it to me in a PDF. All right. Who cares? I mean, we're not... So legit. Signatures. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so then the next one is the tie and bond. Um... That's the tie, the tie and bond um, rainwater harvesting contract for thirteen thousand dollars. 
yes. that has been signed off on by Tyan Bond and both me and Brenda. And so they were, they, whatever was the hang up, they got changed. The hang up was some of the contract terms that changed last November. Um, so we had to work through versions of what had happened because I walked into it and didn't know what had happened. Okay. So this is the second contract that we've made sure it adjusted to the terms that were agreed to in November. Okay. I'll, I'll take a, a motion to approve the MVP rainwater harvesting project contract. So move. Second that. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Um, all those in favor? Dave? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay. Great. Casey, on the certificate of good faith, it looks like it's not the original unless it was put in color printed. No, it's color printed. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is the two. So you have two copies to sign. Okay, yep. I, in case they want a, a wet signature copy. Oh, but I think that's just you, right? Yeah. Oh, it is just you. Yep. I'm sorry. It's okay. Not all those lines. I just realized you're absolutely right. Yep. Okay, so that's done. On the rainwater, uh, that contract's being awarded on the condition that we can transfer money from Calhoun Drive. We no, not the no, rainwater. The tree things the were tree the tree boxes tree box. that yep. you discussed last week. Yep. We no. put that through. Chris, Chris Curtis actually did it the next. He did it before he talked to you. Oh. Sent a request out. He's working with Andrew Smith at MVP to get that done. Uh, they they have not really been all that willing to do. I think they want if there's any opportunity to take money back, they take money back. Maybe. So I don't know, but we'll we'll at least get a couple tree boxes out of it, and then mm -hmm. we'll see how they work and see yeah. how people like them, and you know then we can pursue more of them. I guess. Um, all right. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, mail. I didn't actually give you much mail. I had forwarded a couple, like I got an article from the State House News that I forwarded. Um, I did, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't put any extra mail in this time. There was a couple of things that um, I signed up today for a, uh, the MMA was doing a, um, that here. The MMA was doing a, a webinar, I think the June 24th at 2. I don't know if anyone else saw that. I'm trying to remember what it was about here. I've got it, um, my approvals to do it, but I'm trying to find the actual email. The date was it, Trevor? I think I it was the 24th at 2. It was yeah. the, the uh, Massachusetts Selectmen's Association Leadership Conference. Oh, uh, uh, Keneally, I think it's Secretary Keneally is going to be on it, and it had to do with um, economic development of downtown areas, you know, in the light of COVID. So I thought with the, I don't know if anybody took advantage of any of those grants to do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they, what, they have the, a rolling, uh, uh, the problem is the money's going to get sucked up really fast. I know. But it a is a rolling time. deadline. So if there, if we could get some, you know, like holiday pizza or or somebody's I'm also interested in maybe looking at talking with Chief and looking at ways that if they do need space, that we block off some parking. You know, it's summertime, you can park in the Leary lot. There's other places in town to park, but if we could allot them, whether it's a couple days a week or it's the weekend nights, you know, like Saturday night, Friday night, you know, maybe not Sunday, but a couple of times where we could block off a few spots for the different businesses in town and, you know, it would be really nice if they could, you know, if they wanted to, but on the sidewalk and there, if people could set up areas and have to talk with Dick and make sure it was safe walking areas and that kind of thing. But I just think it would have a cool feel if people could, I just think Giovanni Fig eating outdoors would be really kind of cool and, and where they don't have a space normally, a couple of spots. I just want to be open and accessible to the to the businesses in town that want to do that. 
Well, we did, we actually, if you recall, when we did the temporary change for outdoor dining, there's a lease document in there that if somebody wants to use that space and the select board wants to approve that, yeah. we can certainly do that. They just Look, need to reach out to us. Right, just please reach out. I mean, I just, that's the because thing. Because there is, We're open. because that's town space, we can right. certainly give them that access. Yep, that'd um, be great. And put, you know, make Couple it work tables. for them if it's yeah. possible. But those street, those grants, the streets and sidewalks grant. Yes, it's a yeah. streets and, and spaces grant. I can't remember yeah. the name of the title, but yeah, they're doing a lot of information sessions on that. Yeah. Um, it's a rolling grant program that ends in yeah, September. So uh, Carolyn's right; it probably the information, the money's going to go relatively it's, quickly. It's, yeah. It's a rolling it's a grant program until so September 27th, but honestly, the money will be sucked up in the first month. I bet. Yeah. No doubt. Yep. In big city. So we'll that up. If there's anyone interested, we need to, you know, make that happen. Um, well, that's the M. Dot Streets and Spaces grant. Right. Yeah. Um, and M. Dot is Mass DOT. You know what, Dick is Dick is out checking on stuff. So yeah. Casey, maybe you can anything. ask Dick just to, you know, ask um, like Johnny Figs or Johnny Holiday Figs Pizza or Holiday or Pizza or anybody. That's interested along there. I thought Wolf Beach was going to open up this week. Well, they would need to write that grant. Week, week from. Uh, I know. Oh, yes. Yeah, week they, from today. Though. A week from I'm today. Just okay. Saying, just, they might not be aware of it. I mean, we've been trying to publicize it, but it would be. Sometimes if Dick approaches them, they might think of it. Or, you know, I always think of Wolfies. I mean, that, you know, that might be a sidewalk improvement right mm -hmm. there. Um, but anyway, okay. okay. Do you have any other updates for us? I do. So I executed two contract extensions because we hit a critical point. One of them is the FEMA grant for the hazardous mitigation plan revision. So we had to get that back to them quickly. The other one was the ADA grant for our self-evaluation and transition plan because we haven't finished some of the background work that co that's coordinated through the building assessment. Some of the work was done by GRLA that they were going to yeah. share. Where? with Megan Rhodes and the COG. So I asked Megan for a contract extension document. She hasn't gotten back to me because she's not back in the office until Thursday. Um, we may need to do an extension with the COG on that as well, but I don't have a document. So how do you want to handle that? Do you have any news on the... Um, on the complete streets? I requested no. an extension on complete streets. I haven't heard back yet, so... Uh, d yeah, well, uh, we have been, you know, we had a meeting recent, well, just a couple of things, but um, one was, had you heard about the building assessment at all? They're not back on track yet. I know they, they haven't they even looked at the... Well, they are back on track. They haven't okay. presented their report. Okay. They, I'm they did, finished up several other evaluations. Yep. They haven't given us the report yet. Okay. And in fact, we're paying some of their bills this time okay. for the work that they were catching up on in May and June. Right. Okay. Uh, now I lost track. And I periodically get requests from Greg Franceschi about that. So, yep. um, but like I said, I just said I, I told them they're just catching up now. Sort of blanked on what the other thing I was going to ask. It'll come to you. Let me. Uh, you know what? If I ask you to to let me sign a contract, then it'll come back. Okay. So if we get a, if Megan Rhodes sends me a contract extension for the self evaluation and transition work they're doing in our ADA grant, would you? vote to allow me to sign that contract so we can keep it going. Yes, obviously. Yep. Um, I'll make that motion to allow Casey to sign so that that contract can continue. Mr. McDaniel, a second. Any further discussion? There are none. Dave Wolf, from I. Carolyn Ness, I. Mr. McDaniel, I. Okay. Um, I, I want to make sure that we get that done. Yeah, oh. we need to get that done, but we need some information. So that's why I did the ADA grant extension because Megan reminded me, these are grants that predated me. Yeah. So Megan reminded me we were waiting for information from the building assessment people to incorporate. I know. So I've gotten most of our, so we had ADA reviews for programs and offices. I've gotten most of them back. There's a couple that are left, so I'm chasing some of those folks. Okay. So I wanted to talk about a couple of things, the Leary Lot and the Town Common. Mm -hmm. So Thursday we have a Town Common ad hoc committee meeting at Thursday. 6, yep. and what I'd like to do is um, start the process of selection of a, of a landscape 
architect or engineer to look at the common um, and to, you know, so we have this complete street thing going on with in front of Keswick, I'm hoping that'll be phase one. We're working on engineering out Leary lot parking. And the way that's working out is that two thirds, three quarters of that lot will be developed with a couple pocket parks. Is that, that's what we're hoping for. And then we'll leave the BBC end and leader end open so that we could redevelop that into maybe extension of, of a driveway out on Elm and maybe if BBC wants to put in a park or shared parking with leader if they ever develop. So kind of leave that open for development on that end. But I want to tie in redesigning the common, getting going on that, new park benches, new crosswalks, um, pathways, and um, and I want to have a meeting again with DOT about Park Street and where they're at and how we can help move that process along of taking that over after they upgrade everything. But um, I wanted kind of the, the blessing to the select board to get going on selecting an engineer to, you know, we have appropriated some money for study of that, of the common, and I wanted to kind of get the blessing of the, of the select board to allow us to take that step of looking at one and presenting it to the select board to decide on whether we'd want to move forward with this person or not, but just interview a few, figure out what we want to do and get, get a design going on that. Um, so I really, really, really want to get that done. Um, 2023 will be here pretty quick, and I really just think the new town common, even if we don't take over Park Street and all that other pie in the sky stuff we'd like to do, but just redo the fountain area, redo the walkways, redo the um, curbing and the grass. Do you have do you have any input? No, it's you know it's Leary lot is important in my view of things because of the parking and then yes. you know that still envision. Redoing that walkways to Elm Street. Yeah. Redoing Elm Street. Yep. So basically, my mindset is do away with all diagonal parking on Elm Street, and making that kind of a park area with mm. uh, tables and stuff for the restaurants or whatever. Great idea. And just have the parallel parking on the other side. Right. Right. Wow. That's a great idea. Yeah. I'd love to love to design all that in. And I know we've been working with Ty and Bon on some of this stuff. Um, now, I think my suggestion is I don't know how you are with Titan Bond on this now. I'm not. But my history has been stronger in a lot of ways with West and Samson. Mm hmm Because of what they did for the town before. I yeah. knew there was some bad blood that caused them to say, you know. Yeah. But I think, I think we're, we can get beyond. I hope that. we're beyond that. Yeah. Um, because they helped us out a lot at the time that we were having problems with the landfill and stuff, and yeah. some other things that were going on in town. Right. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm and, not. You know, it's just, just one versus you know, the I, other. I have concern because Titan Bond basically tried to walk back the liability on their contracts. Yeah. Uh, and quite frankly, if we didn't have an administrator that would happen to be reading the contracts. Oh yeah. We could have been hurt. Yep. So you know, it's I don't like that type of backdoor stuff. I well, like being and, up front and. And for know. the common, I wanted to reach out. Uh, one one firm I wanted to reach out to was Berkshire Design. Berkshire Design is good. They, yep. I think, more holistically, would work on the common stuff. You know, a little bit more than. But they could, larger. But I, they, they, they could hear a few of the uh, uh, Leary lot as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because of the fact, you know, here again, you know, I'm just talking about my vision of it, and yeah. not, you know, sure. uh, because you know, quite frankly, since I've been in Portsmouth, it's just that place just struck me. Yeah. And saying, you know, this is what we should be doing with Deerfield. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I Great. absolutely. Uh, like I said, I I even I went up there for a field trip to see their water yep. runoff stuff and. Yep. All the work that they did. I, I, I because mean, they've got the parking with crosswalks and stuff. Yep. You know, it's just. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Same. And that was an ugly town. They've changed it so yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, the, mm. it was it was not connected. It was not. 
I mean, it was just. I'll have to go up and just take a look. It's, well, I mean, I went up as part of a workshop. Yeah. But, so, you know, I was point, Field trip. was pointed out. I've been so many times. I like it. Every, I was in Lenox today, and I just look at the crosswalks going through the town. They have. They have the brick. It's not brick, but it's like it looks like brick, mm -hmm. and it's kind of raised slightly. And then they have, you know, nice granite curbs, cement swath, pavers here and there. It just really ties in the whole pedestrian way of walking around well, there. They had well, what was amazing to me is because they have water problems, just like we do. Mm -hmm. But they had trashy, you know, like little ditchy brooks that went through yep. everywhere, and they cleaned up everything. They cleaned off the runoff. Everything is clean and landscaped and just manicured. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's all with this, and it's not, and it's low maintenance. Right. It's not right. like they have a team of people out there all the time doing maintenance. It's because of the way they did the pavers, they've done mm -hmm. the runoff, they've done plantings that were smart native plantings yeah. that don't need to be maintained. They aren't going to get so out they, of control. So they have pollinator, you know, uh, little areas. They yep. have, you know, I mean, just these pollinator coordinate, uh, cor uh, corridors that connect neighborhoods. And cool. it's just, I mean, it's, it's like unbelievable. Yeah. And, and yes, it was a huge amount of money, but they got, uh, you know, so they had to come up with a match. They supported the match. But um, they did the get a grant. The economic development like, they got from that. People coming you know, to visit, they, shop. In general, it was like 70-ish percent. It was less yeah. than 75%. It was supposed to be 75%, but they ended up, you know, a few costs over. So mm -hmm. it was like they had to pay almost 30% for it. But uh, it transformed the city. Mm -hmm. It was just unbelievable. And, yeah. and, and so I agree with Dave. It's just... It's like, you know, my daughter moved to Portsmouth, my number, number three. I says, what the heck do you want to move to Portsmouth for? Then you go up and you're like, oh, I don't know. This isn't the same place I visited years ago. Yep. <laughs> no, it's this beautiful. Good vision. So, so it, uh, but it was a lot of it was coordination, just like you're doing. Yeah. We coordinate the Leary lot with the town commons. And you know, you're coordinating Frontier and yep. Bloody Brook and yep. Keller Drive replacement. We're yep. doing these things in a more coordinated yeah. effort. Yeah. And, and what you're doing is expanding out the project so that, it, you know, like you're doing, you're, you're cleaning up the area in general. Yep. And, and it, instead of just being overgrown and trashy, it's all, you know, it's just very nice. So, so the, I yeah, agree I'd with like David. to get moving on that and bring some info, info yeah. back to you to get going this spring on that or yeah. summer and fall and whatever. But. So can you and I confer on that, love Trevor? To, because love I don't have a lot of background, so when this request yeah. for... Um, an extension of our complete st streets grant came to me. Yep. I didn't have much. What I did say is we need to do an extension. I just I didn't tell them I didn't know much about it. Yeah. No. We can we can get together on that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I'd love I'd love your help and guidance. I know like when we did the track, we had hired Furcog's, um I think of the woman's name up there at Furcog who did the oh, Maureen. 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 Maybe who did the. Um, procurement and stuff. And oh, yeah. no, that's oh uh, Andrea. That's Andrea. Andrea, yeah, so she helped with that. I don't know if that's something that we need to do or not, or if it's, because uh, I don't want to dump a ton of stuff on your plate, but okay. you know, but if Jen has capability or, or anybody, I, I don't know, well, I just want to be Well, let's see what the scope how, is. I yeah. sort of want to see what the yeah, idea let's, is. Let's come up with an idea and the scope. That way I can figure out how we should approach Where we it. should go with it. Perfect. Okay. I'd love that help. So Thank he you. and I will confer on that. Okay. Then you can go on a road trip to Portsmouth. I know. Yeah. I could go on a road trip. Yeah. Do they have a beach? I have a friend that really wants to uh, go out of state. They have a lot of nice pubs and stuff. Yeah. And they can I go? Trip. Road trip. <laughs> it's a nice, there's a little nice little water. I'll go on the road trip. Yeah. Notice she was nice and quiet. I know. Oh. No, somebody said pub. <laughs> somebody said pub. It's, it's, it's sort of close to seaside. Let's go with yeah. it, Jennifer. Yeah, seaside. Yes, very good seafood. Um, yeah, no, it does. Okay. Well, moving on. Yeah. Anything else, Casey? Um, I'm finalizing the class comp study scope of work and a timeline. Okay. There's there's several elements, so once I finalize it, I'm going to send it out to you guys mm -hmm. so you can see it. It's dates that I have to confer with them on. Okay. Um, and for the next few meetings, you're going to see me continue to address policies. If we, uh, we'll probably have to hit appointments at least once or twice. Yep. Because we're human, we forget things. Um, contracts, 
as they continue to recur. Yep. Um, and then other things that come up, I've got a couple of items. There's a support letter that the town of Conway has asked for for their MassWorks grant to reconstruct okay. Shelburne, Shelburne Falls Road or Shelburne okay. Road. Yep. I know where it is, I just can't remember yeah. right now. I'm drafting that letter. Okay. Um, but they don't need that until July. So before I give it to you, it's either going to be on the 1st or the 15th before I give it to you. I'm going to have them check it, the grant writer check it. Okay. The other thing is we have a home business permit hearing that's coming up on July 15th. So it's, um, we set the date, but I haven't, um, Jennifer reviewed it and, and did the posting and the publication and all that. Okay. And the notices went out today. So we'll give you more information, but we we had to make sure we had enough time between the publication and when the hearing happened. Right. Because this is a home business per, by special permit, which the select board grants, according to the bylaws. So we haven't had one for quite a while. So poor Jennifer and I had to relearn the entire process. Well, I guess you'll get us information on what it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, we'll scan okay. the application for right. you um, and send it out. And okay. so those are some upcoming things that are going to, you'll need to address. And we finalized the meeting and the sixth will also be on the meeting for the agenda for the sixth for the planning board meeting. Yep. So what I would ask you to do. Casey. <clears throat> Casey yeah. you're you're fading in and out, so I can't I didn't hear everything you said. Yeah, okay. All righty, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. You're the Verizon guy. <laughs> so the um, I know July sixth. So we put we put the meeting posting together. We'll publish it tomorrow. Okay. But what we wanted people to hear and see on the posting is that the board's going to convene their meeting to attend the planning board meeting, and yeah. um, you'll need to. Um, notify people that you plan to adjourn at the conclusion of the planning board meeting yeah. when you convene. Okay. So we put all of that in the posting and we wanted you to have copies of it so that when you walk out of here, you know about it. Okay. Um, David's going to be on vacation, but it, yep. he can certainly call in if he wants. Yep. So that's pretty much what I have right now. There's some other issues that are going on in the office. We're doing end of year. Yeah. End of year is busy. taking up a significant amount of time. So. Speaking of which, um, I talked to Brenda. I am going to order the chairs. Okay. With the, um, I know I've, I've held off on this and it's restarted and I've held off and restarted, but um, out of town office expense, I think there's enough left in there to do that and uh, at least get several of them on, on order because it's such a mismatch and you never know. It's like. So it's like the, the wasteland of chairs over it is there. The you never really chair. know if the back's going to let go. or We just need professional chairs here. And I, well, some of them we can keep, like the one I'm sitting in, because yeah, it's useful. Yeah, of course. But some of them are broken. Yeah. So and we, you know, we, we don't need to, a lot. We need to recycle the broken ones, yeah. for sure. Right. For sure. And we'll see if somebody else wants them. Yep. Wants the ones of that course. are useful. And, yep. and what we can do is we can break into John's conference room and take his chairs. Yes. <laughs> oh my God! I'm not doing that with. They have guns. Please. He will. <laughs> they he will, will make my it. life miserable for as long as he feels necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I do not. No. No. Okay. We're, All right. We're we're we'll get to. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I, I'm I gonna did get a lot going. of research on it. And I know. After being since, I mean, every day we're on the phone. I mean, I'm on it's, the phone from the morning until night. I, I, I mean. I didn't even have time to go to the ladies' room for one, two calls, yeah, and to this meeting. I know. And so we just we've we've got. It's the, it's still very busy. People may not think that, but it's mm, still very busy. We are getting some people trying to come in, so yeah. we I. It's busier than normal, and uh, so having the chairs of course in the sit. Yeah, hours, if you're in these things for hours. Nice it, to have yeah, some decent decent, a chair. decent chair for okay. sure. So, I, I, but I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything else, um, you know, just for year end stuff that we were going to tackle. I think that was it. Um, I mean, there's, there's some stuff, stuff that I'll be working with Brenda on because yeah. 
Um, there's out, we're going to have to do transfers, yep. so you'll start to see those yep. as well. Okay. Um, we are ha we'll have transfers between accounts for like contracted services. Right. Do we have enough money in there to get Commonwealth of Massachusetts flag? Well, exactly. That's an, oh, so we'll add that to it too. Oh. I'm sure, there's enough. So, but okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I Maybe didn't know next that. year we can really redo right. these these backboard things. Yeah. Well, I'd like to if get a, a new American flag too. Yes, I agree. That one's tired. Yeah. Maybe I can see if somebody can help me with that. Yeah. Let's. We'll. <laughs> We'll work on that. Actually, I know, <laughs> and it doesn't I know necessarily a have to be you know Trevor. You know we have employees to help with that. <laughs> All, right. All right. So you'll okay. see some activity on those fronts as yep. we get closer. And as everybody knows, we have to, the July 15th meeting, if there's any transfers that have to be completed, they have to be completed that day. And then the finance committee needs to. Finance committee will have to meet on a couple. I have some ideas, but Brenda and I are working on it. Okay. So we'll put together those transfer requests for you guys. Um, I still, they're going to have to meet outside again, but it, can you set it up? Outside? Yeah, once once we know what we need to give to them, we will notify them that they the can other, do it. Um, then just to put on a tickler of some time in September, October, I mean, we've got to get a special town meeting at some point for the fall. Right. And we also need to kind of, I, I, I did hear from the state that um, they're doing kind of a 112 budget, right? They're yeah. Doing, that was they're one of the things that I sent July out and August as a 112 So they're doing budget. a piecemeal budget to continue kind of like they asked other towns, right. towns to do. Just on last year's. Uh, Based on last year's. So there's no. Until they have a final budget. Right. So I think we're going to really not going to see anything from them until like October maybe. That's so. My guess. That was actually a conversation that Brenda and I had yesterday. Um, we'd still like to plan for September. So in her mind and in my mind, we're working off that timeline. Yeah. If, okay. if we're working on September, can we please um, try to get free cash certified? Well, that's what, we're, that's what she and I were talking about. Is in order to get to town meeting, we would have to have free cash certified. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, yeah. I, I don't feel comfortable going to a town meeting unless it's certified. No, no, no. Right. So we know. It makes Maybe no it sense. Be October or something. Like that. And so, if we have revisions and budgets that we need to address, that's the perfect time to do it. Yeah. But so she and I are both right. in that conversation. But, and by yeah. then, we'll have a good idea of how well, what our revenues sure. are. You know what we're spending right now. And we're Better idea. Frugal well, this year. And the you know room tax and all that was delayed. You know that's been delayed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll know what we're we're anticipating yeah. coming and. Um, and then it'd be but great to get on that budget early yeah. this year. Just I know we're in July, not even in July yet, but I'm I really <laughs> want to get started early and plan this enough. calendar early because I have some suggestions about the next year's budget process, yeah. starting it a little bit differently and a little bit earlier. Yeah. Because so we have a good idea of what our capital projects are built out for the next several years. Yeah. Right. So there's no reason that we can't give the Capital Improvement Planning Committee some more support and a different timeline so they feel more comfortable right. and less rushed. We're always after them about That's like, what I learned. Change it. Hey, can you change it? Hey, can you change it? Right. Now I haven't had that planning. conversation with Brenda. I'm, of I'm course. Yeah, no, let's sort of brainstorming with you, but that yeah. was an idea in the back of my head. Yeah. Because I think it would be helpful for them to be more comfortable. Yeah. And things change. They know that. Well, yeah. But, but if, we, if they have a chance to go through their entire review process with a little more expediency in the beginning, if they have to make changes, they have time. Mm -hmm. um, have, you haven't heard any more about Kelleher Drive? Kelleher Drive, I haven't. Um, I... I mean, it's just been last week, but right. they, they were supposed to be working on the form, you know, the culvert part. Yeah, I haven't heard from Chris, but I can send him an email and ask him or ask no, Kevin. Don't worry, because we're not meeting until July 1st again, but, you know, it would be nice to have an update. And any idea on the Mill road, uh, River Road? Mill Village, it's Mill supposed, Village to, it's road. supposed to be done this week. This week, right. I thought it was going to be Kevin quick. will give me an update. I didn't get to see him today. He was out on the road, it's but he usually really comes in and gives me an update every day or so. It's going to look every great. Other day. Oh, it's done. Man. I mean, I just think, what a beautiful piece of equipment in there. Yeah, it is. It is. I think it's going to make a real difference, you know, know, watching that temporary thing in there. It kept the water so high. Now we're going to be so much lower. Yeah. Um, well, and we couldn't have asked for a better time to do it. Oh, it's so dry. It's so dry. Yeah. There have been no no problems with keeping the water back. Right. Right. I know they're running the pumps, I know. but they're Thank doing God. well. So. But 
Some good um, things happening. So yeah, great. So, but that will that's supposed to be closed out this week. Yep. Great. Good. Okay. So that that's kind of what I was thinking about. Um, we will give you the information on the home business permit application because again we'll have to have a hearing. We're coordinating with council about hearings and stuff. Yes. Um, that are coming up with other committees We've as long as we're closed. Coming up. And reopening is now rearing its ugly head, so I should be able to get back to you within a week or two about that. Okay. Um, I have to give the department heads some heads up and get some information from them. Yep. So I'll be putting that out okay. for them. Good. Right. This is going to be a quick meeting, huh? Yeah, all right. Um, um, anything we adjourn? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of doing an analysis of the function of this town hall. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's time, as we get ready to start opening up again, that we open discussion that our key personnel within the town office can only be seen by appointment. I and agree. that even phone calls are screened, so they're not constantly on the phone. Because... It's very difficult to get things done when your workflow gets constantly interrupted. I, I hear that. I know it's not the way we've done four it in years. the past, but it's no, just, it's true. I, I kind of look at it and I'm thinking, you know, revolving the, door of yeah, fire. You know, it, you know, it's up to us to determine which individuals. You know, obviously the ones I kind of been focusing on and more the financial end have been Brenda and Casey. Right. But you know, it's. You can't have that constant flow in there. Right. Because, you know, that's when mistakes happen. You skip over things. You think you're in the middle of something. You get interrupted. You go back. Well, where was I? Oh, I'll right. be here. I wasn't here. You, yeah. And it's just you missed that part. No, I agree. And it, it just makes it more difficult. And you actually end up wasting a lot of time. Not efficient. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've seen something. that happen. You know, I want to open that up for discussion and uh, for thoughts. Yeah. Um, and maybe by the end of July we can come up with a game plan on it. Yeah. See what, um, well, I think it it fits nicely into consideration of reopening. Yeah. How we frame that because yeah. we've noticed that we are experiencing some in, some efficiencies by not having that constant draw. It, we still get telephone calls and emails and all that stuff. But it's worth considering how we reopen and this opportunity to create a different administrative structure so we have time to do work right. that is very often interrupted. Yep. And David had mentioned this to me, so I put it out there, and Kate and I are going to talk about it. Okay. And, you know, Barb has got that to a certain degree already. Um, from what I uh, picked up between Jen and Sarah, mm -hmm. they kind of feel a lot of things before it gets to Barb. Right, right. So, she um, does have good staff in there. So it's a process thing almost that, yeah. that maybe we can address yeah. with a policy, um, partially address with a policy and partially address with a, po with a process change. Mm -hmm. And so this is a good opportunity to address some of these things. So if David and you guys are, are thinking about them, let me know because this is what I mean about making policies. You know, I have to come up with a receipt for acknowledgement for the policy that you just yep. um, approved. And so I was looking at another example, and there's a lot of policies that, as I had mentioned before, I noticed we don't have. And so as yep. we get through addressing some of the policies and putting them on acknowledgement forms, it's going to become easier in terms of creating processes here for daily work for us to address it. If you guys are aware of it and are supportive, it's going to make it a lot easier for us dealing with the public. Well, and it, it, this is a huge safer. change that isn't going away. I know, but it's also going to be safer because we're in, in this until at least next spring. Mm -hmm. um, I, it doesn't look like we're going to get anything before then. Um, we, we have to make up something that works and that it's safe for now until next spring. I mean, we're looking at eight months at least. Well, there's a lot of towns that don't plan to reopen for a while because they're still looking at the reopening plans. They've done what what Barbara and a lot of the other department heads did was revision how they're providing services and connectivity. And I continue to watch Barb make changes that are very effective and efficient. 
and we have the opportunities in other departments, and Bob's doing the same thing in the yeah. land use office. We have these opportunities. Let's take advantage of them. I agree. Yeah. I mean, there was she was doing marriage license. She did one the other of, day. Out of Cambridge, Mass, because nobody else was open doing right. these things. So people are driving from, like, Boston. Right. get a marriage license. Because, because a lot of towns just won't do them. They just won't do them. Which is very frustrating for Barb. Yeah. On the other hand, she set up sort of a structure as when she's taking them. Yeah. And it get a little more easy and to And so this, this by appointment only thing is a great way to handle the, not only the foot traffic, but the process traffic. Yeah. I can't believe someone drove from Cambridge. Out. No, but yeah, they want to get yeah. married and nobody's going to do it. married that badly. <laughs> Only newlyweds. The good news is, is it's a pretty drive. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty drive. It's a beautiful town to get your license. But. Well, just to let people know that you're yeah. doing that kind of stuff. No, I think that's a great, great yeah. idea, David. Yeah. So. so it's a good opportunity for us, yeah. and I'm con starting. To, I'll start conferring with the department. I just, I just think you, you all have worked. I mean, just watching the way the town works for the last four years, um, as crazy as it is so much more efficient in what's going on and the work that we're getting done and the quality of work and the time and just without all this kind of craziness going on of like 15 people an hour coming through the door. Right. And so we still get some of those interruptions sure. on the other hand. Just three of us are yeah. a pain. We're gonna be, we, we got elected <laughs> to be a pain. <laughs> Just remember he said that. <laughs> I just think we have some opportunities to make some process changes that will help us be more effective. Yeah. Because it's all about smart, being effective to the resident. Absolutely. Yeah. Providing that service quicker, easier, right. yeah, better. Because, you know, you can lose good help when they're frustrated and they feel like they're not doing a good job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they can't well, oh, do their job. Can, right. This job is a burnout job. It is. And so reorganizing a process, there's a couple things that Jennifer and I have discussed about reorganizing in the select board office. Right. And one of them, and thank goodness you brought that up, mm -hmm. because I had a conversation today about how we're handling appointments. So we've got a redundancy here. Um, it used to be, because I remember doing it myself, when you guys would do an appointment list, we would then have to process all these appointment letters. We don't have to do that. Right. All we have to do is notify, because Sarah does an outreach on behalf mm -hmm. of the town clerk with the ethics notification. Yep. So that's a sufficient notification that people have been appointed. So I was talking to Pat about it today, because we didn't do those in Ashfield. Right. And the reason we didn't do them is because they weren't necessary. The town Duplicate clerk reaches work. out. So we're eliminating that as part of the process. Yeah. So that's going to make it speedier for Sarah to do her work and Pat to do hers. I did my ethics, by the way. And I still haven't. Really tried. corrupt, I'll tell you. It's not really <laughs> easy to do that. <laughs> I mean, I Sarah's got, on me about that. I was like, I mean, that's a joke. But I, you know, you almost, I try to err on the side of caution and like, no, really, you can do that. And I'm like, hmm, doesn't feel right. So I got a few things wrong, but I got it. You know, I got it passed in the end. Of course, you have to get the right answer. And it's not that long. I passed it. <laughs> <laughs> so. But it was it was interesting to take it again and think oh. about how you service people and the you know how you want to make sure that you are not acting improperly and all that. It's a yeah, of course. Let me tell it you. is. It's and it's always a difficult thing to to take. They to they fit in. deliberately make it tricky. It is. It is. I always do it when it's summertime, so you can sit in the air conditioning. Yeah. And fuss over it instead of thinking, oh it my god, I got stuck. It a long time. Too. Yeah. No. I was I was like, wow. I know. But I, I kept forgetting to get it done. Years, yeah. Yeah. I know it's been a while, so I, yeah, so I had to do it again. All right. Well, anyway, okay. So we're ready sure. for uh, the most public. New, oh, no, public comment. Public Sorry. Comment. Anybody on the line want to make any comments? Crickets. No. Problem. No comment. Oh, we did have somebody. Who's on? That's just me, Jen. No, there's only um, one other caller on. And I think yeah, no, this is Chris. This is Chris Harris. I'm five. Hey, Chris. Hi. Hi. No comment. No Did you comment. Get my email, Chris? Excellent job. Thank yes, you. Everything, everything in the works. I'm going to call you, Chris. We're under better leadership now, so we're, we're okay. more efficient. All right. Well, all right, everyone. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Have a good Thanks night. Thanks for everyone. Have a nice week, evening. everybody.
Good night. Bye. Thank you. All right, I have to write the roll call on that down. Um, oh. So, well, who's the home business? It's um. Uh, no, it's a it's a hair salon um in somebody's house. It's salon sixty eight. Oh salon sixty eight. Who's the owner? Do you remember? Uh, um. La, la something. Oh yeah. Is um. La click. The Claire? No. Like no, the Claire. The Claire. Claire. That's who it is. Where is it? At?